what does an NTP client say when it bumps into an NTP server on the street? The answer is, hey buddy, got the time? In this nugget, you and I are going to lab up, capture, and analyze network time protocol using GNS3 and Wireshark. Let's begin. I'd like you to imagine that Bob, sitting at his computer, is connected out to the internet and is trying to access a server for banking. And a big part of that communication is very likely going to involve some cryptography. We're very likely using TLS or SSL to encrypt the session. And as part of that, there's digital certificates that are involved. And if Bob's computer thinks that the time is 2013 and the bank's digital certificate is valid from 2014 through 2016, Bob's computer is going to believe that that certificate that the bank is presenting is not yet valid and as a result could prevent him from having his secure session with the bank. Other network devices, including routers and switches, also have time-sensitive issues, including digital certificates, along with things such as logging with correct timestamps, and time-based access control lists that enable or disable certain protocols or ports during certain times of the day. It's important that the time is accurate on these systems. So a great way of synchronizing time is using the network time protocol. It uses UDP at the transport layer, and specifically it uses port 123 of UDP. On a Cisco router, the default time zone is UTC, which is Universal Time Coordinated. And NTP messages sent between an NTP server and an NTP client are sent in UTC. So if we want the local time on our devices to reflect our time zone, we need to tell our local devices what the time zone is. For example, is it Pacific Standard Time? And what is the offset from UTC? So what you and I are gonna do, we're gonna lab up an environment in GNS3 with a couple of routers. We'll make one an NTP master, the other an NTP client. We'll capture the traffic, and then we'll analyze it using Wireshark. So in GNS3, let's go ahead and change our view a little bit. We'll go to Edit, Preferences, and let's go ahead and choose the default charcoal gray as part of GNS 1.2, just to mix it up a little bit. So let's start by bringing out a couple of routers. We'll drag out a couple of 7200 series routers, and we'll connect them together using the link tool right here. And let's just go from Ethernet 1.0 on R1 over to Ethernet 1.0 on R2. We'll turn off the link tool, and we'll turn on the label tool. Fantastic. Let's power them up. And then we'll right click on each one of them and from the drop down select console to bring up consoles for each of those devices. So our topology is pretty simple. We're using Ethernet 1.0 on each of the routers. So here on R1, let's go into configuration mode. We'll go into interface Ethernet 1.0 and we'll bring it up with a no shutdown command. Let's also manually configure a MAC address and that way when we see it inside of the packet captures, we'll easily recognize it as the MAC address associated with R1. We'll also give it the IP address of 10.0.0.1 with a 24-bit mask. I'm also going to set the time zone on this router and I happen to be in the Pacific Standard Time which is 8 hours off of UTC. So I'll communicate that with the command clock, time zone, PST, and then how many hours off of UTC we are. And we have a message that indicates that it has changed the time to adjust for that eight hours. So in the details of this message, it used to be 1321, and now it's set to 521. Again, to reflect that eight hours off of UTC that we told the router it's currently in. Also, just for grins, I'm going to set manually the clock on this router. Now, this is a command that is normally done in privilege mode. And to avoid having to get out of configuration mode, go to privilege mode, then come back here to configuration mode. I'm simply going to add the command do in front of the command clock set. And I'm going to set it for 1117, March 26, 2015. And depending on when you and I are going through this nugget together, that date may either be in the future or in the past. And then what I'd like to do is I'm going to tell this router that I want it to act as an NTP master, meaning it's an authoritative time server that other devices can get their time from. So the fact that this router believes that it's March 26, 2015, that's okay as long as we don't mind other devices who are acting as NTP clients getting the time synchronized from this server to be synchronized to this master NTP server. And then we'll get out of configuration mode by typing in end. Next, let's make a road trip over to R2. It also has an Ethernet 1 0 interface. 
So let's go into that interface in configuration mode and do a no shutdown to bring that interface up. Let's also configure a MAC address here on R2, one that we'll very easily recognize inside of our packet capture. And we'll give it an IP address of 10.0.0.2 with a 24-bit mask. I'm also going to set the time zone here on R2 to indicate that we are eight hours off of UTC. And let's peek at what the time is on this router. Now this is normally a privileged mode command, so I'm gonna put do in front of it and we'll issue the command do show clock. And this command is indicating that this router believes it's 526 on November 21st, 2014. So let's do this. Let's set up the capture of traffic between R1 and R2. So in GNS3, we'll right click that link. We'll click on start capture from the dropdown and click on okay. Then we'll go back to our console on R2 and we are going to tell R2 that we want it to use the NTP server at 10.0.0.1, which is R1, to go ahead and synchronize R2's time. The syntax is NTP space server, and then the IP address of our NTP server. And it's done. Now, in the background, there is some NTP traffic that's happening. And the great news is you and I are capturing that on the link between R1 and R2. So you might ask, well, how do we verify whether or not the NTP is working or not? Well, one simple thing that we could do is a show clock and see whether or not the time has changed. Now, right now, it's still showing as November 21st, 2014 at 528. However, once the NTP synchronization is done, we are going to be synced up with the time that's on the NTP server. So one thing we might want to do is do a quick verification that we can ping the NTP server to make sure that we have communication with them. So let's do a ping of 10001. Okay, that's great. And let's hit the up arrow key a couple times and do a show clock again. And the NTP has not yet synchronized, but we're not gonna give up because it often takes several minutes for NTP to synchronize. So while we're waiting for that to happen, let's take a look at a couple other commands. For example, show NTP associations is a fantastic NTP show command. So that's showing us that we do have an NTP server configured at 10.0.0.1. And we could use that same command again and add on the keyword detail at the end of it, show NTP associations detail. And that would give us the ability to dig into the nitty gritty detail regarding NTP and the synchronization of NTP between us and our configured server. Another great command that we could do is show NTP status. And the show NTP status indicates that our clock is synchronized. So that means that by doing those three commands, I bought ourselves a little more time to allow NTP to do its job. So if you use the up arrow key a few times and we do a show clock, now check out the time. We are now synchronized between the clock on this router and the clock on the NTP server. Next, let's go into GNS3. We'll stop that capture by right clicking on the link and selecting stop capture. And now with that stopped, we can take a look at the packet capture together inside of Wireshark. This file is saved as part of the Nugget Lab files. It's called NTP. So in this capture, if we wanted to do a display filter and just type in NTP and press enter, that would show us just the NTP traffic and pretty much any one of these will work. So packet number 40 in the ethernet header has a source MAC address of R2, who's making the request with the destination MAC address of R1. And that's because they are both on the same subnet. In the ethernet header, it says the next protocol is IPv4. That's the hexadecimal 800. So we'll collapse the ethernet header. We'll open up the IP header. This NTP request coming from the client has a TTL in the IP header of 255. It's also identifying the next protocol in the stack is protocol 17 in decimal. That is the protocol number for UDP, user datagram protocol. If we collapse that layer three header information and look at the UDP information, here we have the well-known port of UDP 123 that's used with network time protocol. It's being used as both the source and destination UDP port. And then if we collapse that and we expand the actual payload for the network time protocol and expand the flags, we can identify this as a client request that's going to the NTP server. And based on the requests we make and the responses we get back, the client is then going to adjust its clock appropriately to synchronize with the NTP server. In this nugget, we've labbed up a simple topology with two routers, one acting as an NTP server, the other as a client. We captured the traffic, and then we looked at it through the eyes of Wireshark. I have had a great time in this nugget. I'm glad you joined me for it. I strongly encourage you to lab this up on your own and practice your iOS skills, your GNS3 skills, and your Wireshark skills, because the more you practice, the better you're going to get. 
So again, thanks for joining me. I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.